Yep. Back. Yep. Thank you, Danny. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for you guys that are still here. Uh, as Danny said, my name is James Boswell. I'm at Charter Communications, formerly uh, Time Warner Cable. So I want to quickly talk to you about why go. Um, uh, forward, there we go. Um, so this is specifically about, not specifically networking, this is about Golang, the language. What this is not, I'm not here to naturally bash on Python, although I will a little bit. It's not a tutorial, it's not a comprehensive review, just my experiences and my take on it. And not necessarily a plug for Google, but it's okay if Google, you, know, you can email me. Um, so we had a little bit of a problem with my presentations. My presentations actually were written in Go and are interactive. So if you're following along, you want to click on the link, you actually can, uh, there's some little run buttons for just some little code samples and stuff like that. All right. Um, so why did I start Go? I was doing uh, a lot of stuff. You know, I'm, I'm a networking guy from a background, uh, doing a lot of, you know, traditional SNMP, uh, trying to do some net comp type stuff. And I was having some challenges with Python. One, I wanted to write more modern Python 3, and a lot of stuff's still in Python 2. Python 2.7's been around for a while, um, and it's looking like it's going to be three years of continued support, which is fracturing the community, in my opinion. Um, so it's, it's causing some things to be held back and not move on to, to Python 3. And that also um, impacts the modules. Um, so it's harder to get some of the older modules, like Twisted, if, you, if any of you guys know what that is. Uh, it's a networking, low-level networking uh, module forever, you know, to move over to Python 3. And then also, my experience as a principal engineer when I was working more uh, younger engineers or, you know, not necessarily experienced programmers and trying to help them get set up and have to build a virtual environment and all these nuances of Python 2 versus Python 3, and it was, it was just a lot of challenges. But the, one of the biggest things was trying to scale code and scale code in a performant way. If I wanted to go from a couple dozen boxes, you know, to I want to now pull data from thousands of devices. It just wasn't meeting my performance necessaries. And basically, a former colleague reached out and said, hey, you know, we're looking for Go people. So uh, I decided to learn it. All right, so very quickly, if you're not familiar with Go, has anybody ever done Golang in here? All right. How many people are actually using it? OK, cool. So this is, for those of you not familiar with it, it this is the, the classic hello world. And it's, the reason I'm putting on this on here is a little bit of slide uh, to see what you, you guys can look like. Um, it's not that different from Python in syntax. So obviously, there are, is some differences. But why go? One of the big things is Unicode support. You know, if you have to do with anything with Unicode, it's straight out of the box and go. But the, one of the biggest things for me was also type safety. This is a really uh, very simplistic version um, of Python here. But what I wanted to illustrate here is it's very easy in Python, especially for inexperienced people who are trying to get into programming or network automation, to do some very basic mistakes, right? So it's easy to turn an integer variable into a string and vice versa. And Python would just let you do that. Um, and it'll just, it'll work. It'll let you do that. Golang would not let you do that at all. And yes, as, like I mentioned earlier, there's a problem with the PDF, so there is an intentional blank slide. But dynamic typing uh, compilation can also result in errors that you may not see for a long, long time. And this is a very contrived example, and I, I know it's, it's very silly. But my point was, is if it's somewhere in your code, you have a, a function call, and you say, OK, clean up some junk in this example. And it's an exception, right? It only ever gets called if one weird little thing happens. But you've never actually fully tested it. You will wind up with weird tracebacks and, and all kinds of failures. Because unless you ever use that function, you never hit it. Again, Golang, because of the strong static typing, you don't, uh, you don't see a lot of that stuff because it is a compiled language, for those who aren't familiar. Um, but the, one of the biggest items for me was concurrency, as I mentioned. Um, and so we, I can't run this interactively, but if you were following along, you can press this run button here. And what this code does is it goes out to golang.org, python.org, and perl.org, right? It's just, this is a very simple web scraper. 
and it, it runs, and, but it's very serial, right? It goes to one website, then the next website, and then the next. And that's great, right? But what if I wanted to check the performance to thousands of websites? So in Go, it's very, very simple to do by just changing some of the, the syntax. Um, I think they said there was a laser pointer here. But I can communicate with channels. Um, but you, you literally, you can communicate and do things concurrently at the same time in Go, and very simply, and without having to do a whole lot of heavy lifting. You don't have to import an ASIC module or try to do multi-processing in Python, which is, depending on how you do it, you might be threading or it's actually forking at a low level in, you know, in your system and creating whole new processes, which is something I was running into. So one script was actually becoming hundreds of forks, and that can really bog your system down. So just quickly, uh, what are some things you can do with Go? Some of the things I've been looking at lately, there's a project called GoBGP, um, which is a full-fledged standalone BGP daemon. So you can actually fire it up and speak BGP to a Cisco or Juniper router. But a cool thing about it, because it's also written as a library, you can pull it into your own application if you want to write some business logic around it or do some other things with it and source routes or learn, look at your routing tables or whatever you want to, to do with it. There's a great module that does uh, PCAP. This is basically Wireshark. Again, if you wanted to capture packets into your system, look at them, write business logic around it, do different things with that, you could do that. And then there's an SNP module, NetConf. And one of the biggest exciting things lately is gRPC. Um, not a lot of people got in there, but some of the stuff that's coming out is streaming telemetry. How many folks have even looked at streaming telemetry? Yeah, some of the guys in here. So I'm hoping in the next couple of years we get the entire community away from SNMP because you know, it's, it, SNMP's okay, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's a little old and archaic and slow. Streaming telemetry, uh, Golang is a fantastic language for that um, because you can read, you can have your router, your switch push stuff straight off of this platform and then write your own server that ingests that and do what you want with it. Um, whether you want to put it into a Kafka bus or you know, zero MQ, or whatever you want to do with your data. Uh, it's a great language to do stuff like that in. Um, this is just an example, you know, of an SNMP walk using the Go SNMP library, because I know a lot of us are still doing SNMP. Um, so I just want to give an example of what that code looks like. Um, it's not that different from Python. Um, so that's it. And, whoop. So Go, if you're not familiar with it, who's using it? Docker, Uber, Cloudflare, a lot of big companies. And of course, Google themselves. They, they definitely eat their own dog food there. Um, Go was developed at, at Google. And some of the apps you may or may not heard of, uh, Prometheus, which is a, a monitoring app. Grafana, which you can actually see out here uh, by the coffee bar. Grafana is a, a dashboard app that that is written in Go, the server behind it. InfluxDB, which is a data store. And of course, I think everybody has probably heard of Docker at some point. Um, that's entirely written in Go. Um, and then one of the great things about Go is it's very easy to cross compile. And that's why Docker works well on Linux, works well on Windows, uh, or even Mac, because one language I can compile and distribute a binary, and I'm not have to worry about trying to move a Python environment around and I don't necessarily have to be uh, a C developer or a C++ developer to do this type of stuff. So there's a great community around Golang, and I'm gonna encourage you to check it out. Uh, there's a Slack uh, community, a uh, you know, Reddit community, and of course the Golang Nuts, which is, uh, is what they call themselves, on the Google groups. Um, so thank you for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to approach me and ask, and uh, have a great trip home, everybody. Thank you.